so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Jean Del Calo. Oh, this designer got me drip, drip. That's gonorrhea, brother. Jacob from Matera. <laughs> ah, do you have Jeff a Simmons. Wife? Welcome, boys. You do look good in that baby blue t-shirt. Thanks. Got delivered today. It's my new summer look. Oh. You had a new summer look yourself. Uh, what? This whole thing? <laughs> it's like, it's laundry day. Let me stop playing. <laughs> yeah, this isn't just what happens when it's 80 degrees out. You want to know why I'm dressed like this? Um, No. <laughs> I thought it'd be funnier left and said. <laughs> uh, I was cast in a middle aged boy band. Really? Yeah. What? what are they called? Partial custody. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I feel good. That's amazing, dude. Damn. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, it was tearing up my heart not telling you to. <laughs> but I'm glad to wear a t- got to wear a tank top because it feels like it's 98 degrees. Oh, my God. How many more do you think he has? I don't know, brother. Quit playing games with my heart. <laughs> you I know just what? imagine Mike practicing all this in front of a mirror before we got here. You know what? I'm going to go. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I'm ready to do the episode now. Are you? Uh-huh. I'm ready. Actually, you should be ready to flip that motherfucking coin. We got a special oh, new case quickly? for the challenge coin. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more? Oh, it doesn't matter. It just would be a, sh- a shame if I... Won the toss on a day like today. <laughs> I'll sit here like a good boy and just play along. Because you're you looking it. like my chippy, dude. Thank you. Dressed as my chippy. You saw that he's dressed I saw as my it. chippy. I didn't know what that meant, so you showed me that picture. And you look exactly <laughs> like it. Thank you. It's like you looked in that uh, chippy's face while you did your makeup. Thank you. Did you do your own makeup? I did. It looks great. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. You're getting good. I've been thinking about doing my own makeup for a while. <laughs> I've had my sister-in-law do it in episodes past mm-hmm. and today. And she does an incredible job. She is. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to have her do something else for me in the near future. Uh, it's it's a pretty extensive job. But this one, I was like, let me see what I can do here. And you, you did great. Let me get a head on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Look at oh, that. yeah. You could fucking measure that thing with a ruler. <laughs> All right. Should I flip it? Flip oh, that motherfucking man, coin. I really hope I win today. This would be very fun. Isn't she dressed so fucking stupid? <laughs> is it going to be John or is it going to be May? <laughs> and it is May. Yeah, and it, it is. is you. You do it. Wow, Ooh. wow! Did you plan this to happen in May? I didn't. Wait, wow. has there been a? Yeah, there's been a joke. <laughs> has there been a murder that's been in a boy band? There has not, but there is a little stinker. Mm-hmm. I'm referring to the manager of InSync and Backstreet Boys, Louis J. Perlman. Whoa, they Big have the same thing. manager. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know that, Jake? No. Damn. <laughs> Did y'all know that? <laughs> did he do the other uh, ones at all? He did a bunch. So I right, thought he was O Town, right? Wasn't that making? He the was, band? yeah, yeah. And he put all these bands together in Orlando. Wow. And uh, I, I learned something very funny in this research, where a guy that was he was employed by by Lou Perlman. He said during this time, he's like, you would walk around Orlando, which was like the boy band heyday was like the mid to late nineties, and he said you'd be walking around Orlando and just like walking through the mall. And you would hear like, like fifteen year old boys just singing a cappella, and just dancing? hoping to get discovered. Yeah, that's fucking crazy to know uh, that there was a time in the world, Jesus. and I'm sure it didn't stop in Orlando. I bet you I was doing that shit in Christiana Mall, and I bet you I was. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a pedophile's paradise dude, right there. I'm gonna go for the both of you are definitely boy band material because no, that was me in my eighth grade talent show. Bye, bye, bye. He knows no. the dance. Yes, I've seen him do. The, he's done the dance dude, on stage. He and my friend. Fucking Paul Ragu Mangu on Twitter would sit in the fucking. <laughs> this was freshman year in high school, rehearsing in a bathroom mirror the breakdown from the pop video. You weren't doing it to be ironic. You were doing it because it was cool, right? Yeah, we went and saw them live twice, <gasps> dude. And this, uh, he has the balls to call me gay. I that. don't call you gay for any other reason than your sexual <laughs> prowess. <laughs> Wow, John. I did know this. I was big into it. I know this because you just told me a little while ago, but uh, was your first concert New Kids on the Block? I believe it was. I do believe. (laughs) Which really, it really seeped into my my blood, my veins, became part of who I was. They will get you. Did you see New Kids on the Block's uh, Hanging Tough video? Yeah, I remember that. It was on like cassette, right? Yeah, it was like a concert documentary. My sister had that. And it was great. There's one thing I remember that I never forgot was that Donnie Wahlberg 
hated what was provided for a meal because he asked the lady what it was. And she's like, it's soul. He's like, soul, what's that? She's like, fish. She's like, "Mm mm-mm. And he just starved that day. (laughs) I think he got eggs, but he didn't get the soul. Dude, I did that once at a restaurant. I ordered veal parmesan. And my wife was like, oh, you know that's... You know what that is, right? I'm like, yeah, it's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> no, you so didn't. Like, yeah, dude. And I was like, you wait. You thought it was just differently yeah. named? Yes. That was like a type of chicken, like a cooler chicken. <laughs> and then like You're she's like, no, off. it's it's baby calf or something, yeah. like baby lamb or something. And I was like, yeah. what? And then they showed me like a picture. And I was like, that's it. Like that's that tough. was it before. And I was like, oh, man. $40 veal parmesan, and I just, like, let it sit there. You didn't eat it? No, because I couldn't. You're, it is tough. I'm with yeah. you. It's tough when you find that, that it's a baby. Yeah, I can't. I've had it. I don't think it's that good, to be honest. I don't you like know. it either. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I only got it as a child because I like the parmesan part. Right. Like, yeah. I, I could eat fucking squirrel parmesan. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, put, cover a goddamn boot and cheese, and I'm going to eat it. <laughs> well, why don't you throw out the P.O. box for the squirrel parmesan? <laughs> yeah, I think we're P.O. box... 27 maybe in Prospect Park, PA. Oh my God, I hope it's not. If not, not. Somebody else, some lucky soul is going to get squirrel parmesan in the mail. <laughs> some lucky soul. Yeah, we're 27 or 34. It's like, it's a two-digit number in the 20s or 30s. Oh so. my God. I would I would play it safe if you're a squirrel parmesan chef. Just, just mail them to a couple of the 20s. Between 20 and 39. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Thank you. Oh man. But yeah, uh, Lou Perlman was a real motherfucker. And just a scheming ass motherfucker from the time he was a child until the end. So he was born in Queens, New York, uh, June nineteenth, nineteen fifty four. Juneteenth. Oh, yeah. I recently, by recently, I mean within the past two years, found out what Juneteenth was, and I came dangerously close to tweeting out, "What the fuck is Juneteenth?" Oh my god! I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't either. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm glad you just got to say it live on air. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize my ignorance now, and thank God I didn't do that. But, um, yeah, I didn't know that, Jake. It just sounded like something your sister would make up to trick you into believing it to make you look like an idiot. <laughs> so I'm going to get as far away as quickly as possible. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so did Lou Perlman, I don't know if I've ever heard him speak, did he have like a Queens accent? Was he like no. a New York tough guy kind of guy? No, he just sounded like, you know how fat people have that, it sounds like they got like a ball of bread stuck in the back of their oh, throat? yeah. Like, he had that with a little New york to it. Okay. Um, he was a real fucking weirdo. Probably a child molester. Yeah. And uh, just a scheming-ass motherfucker who ripped a lot of people off. Was but, he the guy who would, like, put up flyers, like, come audition in the mall? Like, that kind of guy? He would, Yeah, he would put them up in the mall, but most of the auditions would take place in his home. Yeah. Like, all ten of BSB and NSYNC. Yep, they were cast in his home. personally in his home. Mm-hmm. Now, he would often gain the trust of the parents, and most of these people saw dollar signs, so they would willingly bring these kids. But uh, Nick and Aaron Carter's mother was one of the people that spoke out and said, like, there's some really weird shit that I'm not going to really go into detail about, but he was a sick individual. And it seems to be that he picks one guy from each band to kind of take the brunt of the weirdness, to kind of put him on the hook, to make him feel guilty, like, if I don't do this, then I'm going to fuck over the entire band. It's real sick, manipulative shit. Uh, on a funny note, there is a very cool documentary called The Boy Band Con, The Lou Perlman Story, that Lance Bass executive produced. Okay. Whoa. You can watch it for free on YouTube, and it's, it really provides like a lot of information and, uh, and backstory, backstreet backstory, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, backstreet boy story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I love boy stories, and I can't wait to hear more of them from you. You're going to love this one. This is very good, and like Lance Bass is, uh, he's in a lot of it, and he gives a firsthand account of what it was like to interact with this fucking guy, and he's he's very well spoken and he's very believable in everything he says. But there's a, there's a part where they get to Aaron Carter, uh, Happy Birthday in Heaven, Aaron Carter, uh, tough paper route, yeah. but he. <laughs> What does that mean? He had a tough paper His route, man. break? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, he what, he did get famous and probably made a little bit of money, but he had a tough end, man. Like, it's clear that he was a deeply flawed individual. I've never heard was, the term tough paper route. That's why it made me oh, really? giggle. Yeah, he was um, wildly exploited. And until the end, he defended okay. Lou Perlman. In that documentary, oh. The Boy Band Con, now, Nick is a different story. It's, it, it seems as though he really endured a lot of abuse from Lou Perlman. And he just chose not to speak about it because, like, with any powerful figure taking advantage of people in show business, 
they the victims don't want to talk about it because they're you never know how many people are connected to these abusers mm-hmm. and you never know how far reaching their retribution will be. So Nick was always hesitant to speak about it, but Aaron, he defended Lou Promo to the end. And there's one very funny part in the boy band con where they're insinuating that Lou Perlman was the diddler and Aaron Carter's defending him. He's like, th- he would do that kind of stuff. He's like trying to showcase what a good person he was. He's like, when I was a teen boy, the man showed me how to, how to do diamond pushups to build up my chest. <laughs> man. And personal, then, personal trainer. Yeah, and then there were also rumors that Lou Perlman in his mansion had a tanning bed with cameras in it. And again, Aaron oh Carter God. defends him. He says, I looked for those cameras, my mother looked for those cameras, and my father looked for those cameras. And not one of the three of us found any cameras in his tanning bed. Just fucking Lou in this fucking <laughs> shit. Bopping off to eyes this close to the camera. Brother, when you see it, you've probably seen this fucking guy, right? I believe so, yeah. Uh, he looks like the kind of guy who has paintings where the eyes slide out so he can beat uh, off to you. Yeah. He's a big, fat, fucking weirdo. weirdo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, was he a great, big, fat weirdo? <laughs> but yeah, he was born in Queens, New York. His parents had uh, very funny names. Hi was his father. And Spelled Rini. how? H-Y, brother. Whoa. And Rini was his mother. Hi, and Rini. Mm-hmm. Hello, John. <laughs> his father was a dry cleaner and his mother was a lunch lady, which I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse for a fat boy. Probably always a curse. Yeah. Give that yeah. a curse. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're fat or thin. If your mom's a lunch lady, you are getting a toothbrush shoved up your ass during football practice. <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen in my school. Uh, <laughs> and it had nothing to do with the lunch lady. <laughs> But, I mean, you'll never hear those kids complain about having dirty assholes. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, always look on the bright <laughs> side of the toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, Hi and Rini were his parents, and uh, he was a lying-ass kid, all right? And people always fucking busted his balls about this. He wasn't very nice. He was a little fat boy, and other kids hated him. On top of those reasons, he also lied about shit constantly. So kids, anything he said, kids were like, shut the fuck up, dude. However, there was one thing that seemed like an outrageous lie that he spoke of that ended up being true, and it bought him a lot of credibility, was that his cousin was Art Garfunkel. No way. It truly was his cousin. The voice of an angel, Art Garfunkel. Yep. Incredible. That is awesome. And when he was about to be, uh, I was about to say eulogized, but uh, bar mitzvahed, he was telling kids at school, hey, if you come, you'll get to see my cousin Art Garfunkel sing. And they're like, all right, whatever, dude, fuck off. But a couple of the kids went, and they saw Art Garfunkel sing. Incredible. Did yeah. he sing Bridge Over Troubled Water? I don't fucking know. Check it out on Setlist FM, John. <laughs> <laughs> I have the app, and I will. <laughs> he, had, he did have one good friend, though. It was this kid named Alan Gross, who lived in the Mitchell Gardens apartments with him. So this was in Queens. And Alan Gross's apartment overlooked Flushing Airport. Lou would often say that he developed a love for blimps by watching them take off at Flushing Airport from his window. But that was a lie. Alan Gross's airport, Alan Gross's apartment was the one that overlooked the airport. Okay. So Alan would invite him over, and they would watch blimps take off, as most kids who never get any pussy do. Is that what they called other fat kids? <laughs> <laughs> Were there that many blimps taking off? In that time? Apparently. This yeah. is fucking... A lot of Hindenburg reenactments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hindenburg comes into play at some point. What? Yeah. Uh, let, let me get to it. Time machine. He's born after <laughs> it. <laughs> he ends up going to Queens College and studies accounting, which is ironic for a guy that ends up uh, masterminding one of the largest Ponzi schemes in American history. He goes there, and while he's there, uh, he's still obsessed with, with air travel. So he develops a business plan for a helicopter taxi service. Whoa. Pretty cool. Awesome. And that's just coming to fruition now. Yeah. Yeah. He was way ahead of his time. But get this. There was a, there's a woman in the Boy Band Con documentary who was a friend of his, and <clears throat> she tells him at one point she ha- she's running late for a job interview, and uh, he's like, oh, I can get you there. She's like, how are you going to get me there? He's like, I'll send a helicopter for you. So he tells her where to go to meet this helicopter, and the helicopter picks her up and drops her off. 
And uh, she says somebody at the job asked how she got there today. And she's like, oh, they dropped me off in a helicopter. And they're like, really, lady? They dropped you off in a helicopter here. <laughs> no one believed her? No one would believe her, yeah. But he eventually is able to uh, lease a helicopter. So he's kind of getting this business, dare I say, off the ground, Jake. Oh, my God, yep. Mike. Ooh. Now, at this time, going back to his love of blimps, he gets into the blimp game. <laughs> yeah, just have a blimp pick you up. It'll be there one day and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah you free halftime Monday night football. <laughs> <laughs> when is the next Super Bowl? Um, we have to leave in October. <laughs> but he and his buddy, Alan Gross, they were lifelong uh, blimp fanatics. They would even call themselves balloonatics and helium heads. <laughs> All right, now I'm into it. I got a, got a good sense of humor about it. I, when you brand yourself Helium with man. those kind of names, like you were resigning yourself to a life of no pussy, which for Lou Pearlman was fine. Yeah. Jake, how far do you think you could go in your life without pussy? You know, I get pretty angry pretty quick. I know you do. You're getting yeah. angry now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going on four hours, so uh, I might have to wrap this up. Yeah, he's going to try to rape me in the baseball field after this. <laughs> As usual. Go on. <laughs> He's becoming more and more obsessed with blimps. And now that he kind of got his fucking helicopter taxi service up and running, he's like, fuck it. Like, why can't I do this? So he finds out that there is a blimp tycoon coming to America. This is a German fellow named Theodore Woolenkemper, Jake. Okay. He's coming to America. He's actually coming to New York City. So he arranges to meet with him. He invites Theodore Woolenkemper over to his apartment and his mother cooks dinner for him. And Theodore takes a liking to him. He says, you know what? Um, why don't you come visit me sometime in Germany, and I'll show you the ins and outs of what I know. He's a, bl a blimp manufacturer. He's like, I'll tell you everything I know, and uh, you can do whatever you want with that knowledge. So he goes over to Germany, and he studies under him for over a year. So he learns the ins and outs of the blimp business. There's no way this takes more than two weeks. <laughs> no I couldn't learn everything I need to know about blimps in a two-hour YouTube video. Just, just on the in flight America. over to Germany. Oh, wow. Okay, just hop yeah, back. I'm just going to turn this thing around. Yeah. Lou comes back, and he starts a company called Airship Enterprises Limited. What year is this at this point? Uh, this is the late 70s. All right. All right. Damn, this is crazy. Now, at this time, he starts his blimp business, but he doesn't even have a fucking blimp to lease. However, he's such a smooth talker that he's able to convince Jordash, the jeans company. Uh, they're sponsoring me for tonight's episode. Jesus. Do you like these? Are they really Jordashes? They're not, no. <laughs> these are like, I don't know. You, you buy these like off a guy in a hut in Africa. <laughs> but he's able to get Jordash to sign a lease for a blimp, and he has nothing to provide for them. And they would just have their name on it. That's all they, they would. Get out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was one point, though, where he got caught up because Jordash wanted the blimp to fly over New York Harbor for a special event that they were having. And at this point, he's got to scramble because he doesn't have a fucking thing to provide for them. So he has um, a guy who works in aluminum construct a balloon for him. And they paint this fucking blimp. Uh, what he thinks is gold. But his friend Alan Gross says that it ends up looking brown, so it looks like a flying giant turd. <laughs> Jordan's jeans. You'll shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they're able to get the blimp up and running, and they're they're trying to fly it to uh, from Lakehurst, New Jersey, which is where the Hindenburg yes. crashed. I didn't know this. I always thought the Hindenburg was just a, a fucking blimp that crashed. I didn't know people actually died. Oh my god! Yeah, there were massive? like yeah, thirty five deaths. No survivors yeah. on that. <laughs> Pardon me, but it took off from Lakehurst and um, it crashed and uh, it was headed to New York Harbor but it made it so far as a, a garbage dump we're talking about the Jordash turd yeah the Jordash turd yeah did anybody it, die in this one it did not no okay. so was anybody in it was yeah there was man? a guy flying it okay. but he was able to at least not be seriously injured yeah. in the crash yeah I guess what is a, a blimp crash really like I mean Hindenburg hit like a power line or something right or no I don't think so. Well, I they think just, just exploded. exploded. That was hydrogen. But yeah. it was fucking massive, too. Yeah. Like, this is a blimp where, like, one guy could fit on it. A one-man blimp. I feel like as you're about to crash, mm -hmm. you're going so slow in a blimp, you could escape. Also, I mean, just, you gotta you gotta bring your own fucking parachute when you're going on the first <laughs> blimp ride in history. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that would have been so easy to jump out of that thing yeah. and live. Dude. So, this was, the crash happened in 1980. 
So at that point, he's thinking like, all right, I'm fucked. He comes up, all right, five years go by, and he starts another company for um, Airship International is his new company. So it was initially Airship Enterprises Limited, so now he's come up with Airship International. There's a public offering of stock, and he's able to raise $3 million. Whoa. Real smooth talker. And uh, during this time, he's able to buy a blimp off of his buddy in Germany. It's a a 13-year-old blimp that he buys just to get himself off the ground. (laughs) God, I love this. (laughs) Can we add a counter in post? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as luck would have it, he's able to lease that 13-year-old blimp to McDonald's. So he's raised $3 million, and now he's got a contract with the biggest fast food chain in America. Now, at this point, are there blimps outside of football stadiums, like on TV? Is that already a thing? I don't think so, but uh, I think the most famous blimp is the MetLife blimp. Mm-hmm. Which he ends up getting that contract too. Whoa! So this guy was fucking the okay. blimp guy. He ends up in cooking. America he does. For a while. Yeah. He ends up cooking. And on top of this too, in 1987, he finally settles uh, with the insurance company, and they give him 2.5 million dollars for the crash at Lakehurst uh, Air Force or uh, oh. Naval Base. I think it was. Everything's wow. coming up, Perlman. Yeah. <laughs> for now, it is. So I mean, he's really doing pretty well for himself. So aside from making money with all these these high powered companies, he's getting a shit ton in insurance money. 1989 comes along and uh, uh, one of his blimps is destroyed in a windstorm. So at that point, he's like, all right, maybe I should look into something else because I don't want to keep going through this shit. (laughs) Yeah, the blimp's worst enemy, (laughs) the wind. Well, we had to shut down our business over a breeze today. He heads to Florida and he starts a company called Transcontinental Airlines. So this is July of 1991, Jake. Okay. Their focus is on private jet rentals. And uh, blimps and private jets. Uh, as far as his big blimp clients down there, uh, SeaWorld is his biggest client. So that's a pretty big deal. Paint that motherfucker into a goddamn Shamu. You got some gravy cooking. Oh, man. How many guys do you think rented a blimp just to fly it into their ex's house? I would say less than two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, fella, if you're out there listening, you have an open invite to come watch a recording of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Hey, uh, no, don't, don't. guys, tell uh, why don't you message us and tell us the most fucked up thing you've ever done to get back at an ex. So back to our friend Lou Perlman, Jake. So he's into the private jet rental business right now, and uh, at this point, he's he's opening up to invest this company, opening it up to investors as well. And there's a guy who believes in everything he does wholeheartedly. There's this uh, little Asian man named Dr. Joseph Chow. Okay. Over the course of Dr. Chow's lifetime, he ends up giving Lou Pearlman a total of $14 million. For what? For anything and everything he has money for. He believes in wow. him so much. His family fucking hates it, but he continues to give Lou Pearlman money. I need to pray for a Dr. Chow in my life. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, I'll order you some. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Jake, do you want to eat Dr. Chow's chicken while I'm ordering? <laughs> that sounds delicious. Thank you, bud. <laughs> want a pint or a quart? <laughs> Definitely a quart. Come on. He's got all this fucking money now. And in uh, 1991, uh, he creates a company which isn't a real company. On paper, it exists, but in reality, it doesn't. It's called Transcon. So he's selling stock for that. And this begins his descent into a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, an IPO for a fake company. This was an IPO for a fake company. Yeah. The initial wow. public offerings for the previous companies were legit. Were real, yeah. But now he's fucking selling snake oil. Like he legitly. is, yeah. yeah. And he has a tendency to really overextend himself, and you'll see that in everything he does. He's able to make a ton of money, but he really gets so far into debt that he just can't keep up with it. Now, at this point, um, that happens in 1991. It's the IPO for Transcon stock. Not a real company. On paper, it exists. In reality, it does not. From 1991 to 2006, he takes in over $300 million from investors. Oh, my God. And this is all concurrent with him forming the biggest boy bands that we've ever heard of. I'm glad you bring that up because in 1991, one of the jets that he rents out is rented to the manager of New Kids on the Block. Oh, and in He had speaking, nothing to do with New Kids. He did not, no. This is just Sparks' right. next idea. And this guy's name, I think, was Johnny Wright, who was their manager. Hey, you can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> who also, I think, managed New Edition, now that I think about it. Okay. <clears throat> so that stable of boys that they would pull from to sing. Yeah. 
Yeah. So he he's talking with the manager and the guy. <laughs> You're so bad. You can't Listen. roll your eyes at me when you look like that, Mike. <laughs> yeah. He does need a mirror so he can <laughs> not forget what he looks like at the moment. And if you're listening to this episode, I suggest at least taking a peek at the YouTube. Jesus. To get a look at uh, Mike's Insta. The newest member of Partial Custody. <laughs> can only be described as Wario. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the great Wevin of Backstreet Boys. <laughs> wa wa Kevin. <laughs> Wait, why do you make up a fucking boy band when you were actually in a boy band? What do you mean? Wasn't your band a boy band? I guess kind of. What was it called? <sighs> Dirty Diamond. Oh no, you were it was strictly three boys. A, a, a. It was a more of a man Diamond band yeah. cover band. Yeah, only eighties gotcha. Joel music. <laughs> <laughs> He finds out the new kids on the block is grossing over a hundred million dollars a year. So as well as he's doing, he's like, fuck, I could probably get in on this. He's able to raise some more money. And in 1992, he puts out an ad in the Orlando Sentinel asking boys. <laughs> <laughs> what an insane concept already. <laughs> yeah. This is already going downhill. Some of these boys had to be men at there at this point though, right? No. I think Chris Kirkpatrick was like fucking He was older. 18. Kevin Richardson was older from Backstreet, but the rest of them were legit boys. I think Fatone might be a little bit on the uh long yeah, the tooth as well. He, Joey Fatone, I think was a dancer at like Universal or Who Disney. is, by the way, known as the fifth and practical Joker. Thank you. Wow. Full we're, circle. We're almost there. Yeah. I, I, I might as well won the goddamn flip tonight because we still got to talk about him. <laughs> you devil, man. You figured it out. I did. I'll give you a lot of credit. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bunch of these motherfuckers did have jobs. Yeah, Joey Fat One, Kevin Richardson, Chris Kirkpatrick. They were all, I'm pretty sure, either Disney or Universal dancers. Oh. Well, we got... Uh, JT and um, JT JC, was uh, Disney. They were Mouseketeers. Yes. Um, my mother dated a Mouseketeer. Valens, uh, Frankie did? Avalon. Frankie Avalon. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Richie Valens died in a plane crash. So it's ironic you bring that up because of the blimps. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> kind of a loose connection, but <laughs> that's that's uh, my next band. Lose connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I lose everything and my kids and wife won't talk to me. He was the part of the day the music died, right? Mm. Yeah. Him. Big Buddy Bopper. Holly. Yeah. Big yeah. Bop. Yeah. Big Boppy. You guys know Every Day by Buddy Holly. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know that song, I suggest you, you put it on Spotify, YouTube, whatever. In the background of that song, it sounds like somebody's jacking off throughout the entire thing. It does sound like fapping. Yeah. Every it's clapping. day. It's single clapping. You think it's clapping. But we stink is fapping. <laughs> I was just starting to trust you. <laughs> so he's putting out these ads. <clears throat> pardon me. For boys. Hey, boys. <laughs> ads, that's right. Ads for boys. Meet me at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> he has them meet him in his fucking living room. Whoa. Dude, there's no shortage of moms willing to bring these boys to his living but room. This guy's got a fucking million dollars. Why doesn't he have office space to make this at least seem more, less creepy. He yeah. eventually gets to that point. Now, when he starts forming these boy bands, initially, it's Backstreet Boys. He casts them. Mm -hmm. He starts requesting that all the boys and all the bands that he casts refer to him as Big Papa. Oh, my God. You didn't like that, Big Papa? Okay, I kind of like it now. Yeah, now, that you, kinda, now that you, Big Papa, you kind of yeah. like it, don't you, Can you guys Papa? call me Big Papa from now on? Yeah. What do you want to be called, John? Twin. Okay. Got a little big pun thing going on over here. Oh, you do. Yeah, I'm nasty twin. I don't, I don't care. care. <laughs> <laughs> Backstreet Boys is formed now, and uh, I have some sad news. Airship International, their last blimp, uh, goes kaput. That folds in 1995, Jake. What do they do? Literally, they, they folded it up. <laughs> yeah, they, they just <laughs> deflated it. Neatly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a storage unit. better part of a month to get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in one Tupperware container. Yeah, it's, it's under someone's bed until <laughs> somebody else comes over you and needs sleep to over. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sleep number. <laughs> now, during this time, Lou Perlman also has uh, at least a significant stake in some other legit businesses like TCBY Yogurt and, you'll like this, Chippendales. Like the mail review? No, the fucking cookie company. I don't know. Jake, I, I'm sorry. I, I never mean listen, to be mean to you. You're a Disney that was meant fanatic. for John. It was meant for I'm me. I'm sorry, Aren't Jake. The, and I, I could tell. Disney called Chippendales? 
right? Yeah. yeah. God, I'm and so you're sorry. you're a Disney guy, and they're in Orlando. I'm sorry. Please be mean to me now. He could have just owned the squirrels. That Chippendale movie that just came out was pretty good. Did you it guys sure see that? was, yeah. Yeah, it was good. I didn't see yeah. it. Yeah, and that leads us to our sponsor today. We're sponsored <laughs> by Disney+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought Disney Plus uh, should have been for fat Disney characters. Oh, man. That would have been awesome. Let a myself separate... go. Let <laughs> myself go. Did he write this one earlier? You think? <laughs> it was pretty fast. There's a Disney Plus store next to the regular Disney store at the mall. <laughs> that would be so sad. A Disney Plus section. <laughs> yeah. Just Lane Bryant and the Beast. All, all you the winnies, models. all you winnies, and you. <laughs> who are the other? All the models are Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> My aunt Pat, who once left me five grand, looked like Ursula. Oh, she did, and you said I look like Aunt Pat. Oh, uh, look at that! Take the hat off. Take that. Keep the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put up a picture in the Patreon of oh, my aunt Pat, and you be the judge whether or not Jake looks like my aunt Pat. And then whoever sees that picture, please make an Animorphs book cover of Jake turning into <laughs> Aunt Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna one of these days. I'm gonna dress. I'm gonna find a picture of your aunt Pat and dress in the exact same outfit. Come all over it. <laughs> That's what I would do, Jake. Jesus. <laughs> By the late '90s, all right. So now he's also formed in sync. Okay. Yeah, he now is responsible for essentially '90s Beatlemania. It is. Yeah. Yeah. The the two biggest bands in the country, probably yeah. the world. Mm-hmm. For a good five or six years. Yep. By 1997, I would say Backstreet exploded. Mm-hmm. And what year did they form, you said? 93? 92. 92. Okay, so it took them a little bit to really get traction, right? <coughs> it did. Um, I a couple think of years they, of choreography practice. I might be confusing them with NSYNC, but one or the other blew up in Europe before they blew up in the U.S. Yeah. I think it was NSYNC. But either way, it took each of them a couple years to get up and running. They would actually they would actually practice in one of Lou Perlman's airplane hangars. So just imagine that if you, if you're a pervert pilot and you're just walking past your plane, you see five teen boys working out in the heat. Imagine yeah. that. I just got to check the gas levels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why is your hand on your exposed penis, <laughs> Greg? Your plane's not even in this hangar. I'm running hot. <laughs> so did they shoot that video in his hangar? The I want it that way. The biggest, like, uh, ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, because it's like there's an airplane and a huge empty hangar that has to be trans. Is that their big, uh, their first hit too? Yeah, I think so. Their breaking hit. That's a good question, Jake. That was a really good question. And it's really fucking concerning that you can just off the top of your head remember what these videos were like. You fucking pervert. Go on, Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Now, late 90s is when the investors start asking questions because they're not getting dividends from their investments. Right. So there's one guy named Julian Bencher who goes to Lou Pearlman and asks, dude, where the fuck's my money? He's like, man, it's not up to me. It's up to this fucking German guy, Wollenkemper. He's not paying the dividends that he owes you guys, and I can't do anything about it. She's like, all right, where does he fucking live in Germany? He actually gives him the business where this fucking Theodore Wollenkemper owns. Mm -hmm. So this guy, Julian Bencher, flies to Germany to confront this guy. And And Wollenkemper doesn't really... Have any clue about this, right? It's He's not, not involved in fault. the company. Yeah. Like, there's always like, like with most pathological liars, there's always a nugget of truth that they end mm-hmm. up twisting into some giant charade. <laughs> and if I may, <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed this moment. Is it because of how he looks yes, and the way he spoke? Yeah, okay, yeah. it's the juxtaposition of your facial hair. <laughs> um, what did Transcon supposedly do? What did their company offer? It was an event for... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you just ate the whole beer can. <laughs> I spit all over this beautiful t-shirt. Oh, you man. You can't afford it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it cost an arm and a dick. <laughs> so this guy, Julian Bencher, flies to Germany to confront this Camper guy who is not involved in this company at all. He tracks him down. He's like, look, dude, I just want my fucking money. And he's like, money for what? He's like, well, Lou Perlman said you co-own the company and you're the one that decides who gets paid and what. He's like, dude, I have nothing to do with that company. So this is the first chink in the armor. Jake. I'm just taking a sip. Listening. I bet you are. Now, at this point, fucking NSYNC's in full swing. He's also got a band name, Take Five, and you... (laughs) 
I don't remember Take Five. Great, great, great candy bar. A candy bar. It's a delicious candy yeah. bar. And one of the other, I don't think Oak Take Oak Town, 98 Degrees. Didn't Take Five had When the Lights Go Out? Baby, when the lights go out. That's all I remember. That seems like when you Is that out. true? Yeah. yeah really I think them? I, I, I remember think. that song, but I don't remember. That and then uh, we have, who else do we got? Let's try to name them all. <laughs> we got the, Another, light, the light funky ones. Was he responsible that was for one. them? Yeah, they had two you big know, hits. Whoa, no. LFO, you fucking New kids. New on the block oh, had a bunch of hits. I didn't hits. know their, their Chinese formal name. makes me sick. You don't know, don't know what LFO stands for? Nobody's It's new. light, L-Y-T-E, funky ones. Everyone knows it except for you. Now I know. You're an idiot. You'll never get over <laughs> God this. I'll never it. let you live this down. <laughs> he also had a female group called Innocence. In no, Innocence? Innocence. They must have not gotten much MTV TRL airplay. They no. did not, but get this. They were very close to having Britney Spears as their lead singer. Whoa. That would have been different. Mm-hmm. No, she obviously would have. So rose to the top. Yeah, so like they JT cleared. Did. They clearly, ha- in no sense, clearly had no sense if they let her ass go. This is obviously. Fa- There's no way he has anything to do with um, One Direction, right? He's already no fucked over by then. It's funny you bring that up because when he eventually goes to jail, one of the conversation he has from jail is about what he would do with One Direction. Because One Direction was never big on dancing; they were just putting out jams and singing them in yeah. concerts. And he's like, boy, if I got a hold of them, those motherfuckers would be moving. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way for him to say he that without sounding like an him. absolute creep. <laughs> yeah. But if I could get a hold of those boys overseas, <laughs> they wouldn't stop moving. They would be squirming. <laughs> they do have some jams one direction. They yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Ba, 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 oh, ba, oh, ba, oh. Ba, I think it went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it went, uh. Oh. It is funny though, because you one know, verse, I know, <laughs> you know, I remember you, and I know, you know, I know, you remember me. And We're gonna get knocked for copyright, Mike. Oh fuck! You sound so good. <laughs> Damn. You sound just like Liam. I know. Nah, Jay, what were you about Niall. to say, my friend? Well, I said no. It's it's fine. It was uh, the One Direction. That's also the only way a blimp can move, right? <laughs> Damn. So it all comes full circle. You should be a boy band wrangler. You know what? I've been thinking about it. Sitting back on the couch, belly exposed, finger knuckle deep in my belly button. Mm, knuckle Think deep would be a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got all these bands, and InSync is the one that really pops, although LFO did have a couple big hits. Now they're garbage. They shouldn't even be in the conversation. <laughs> Their lead singer passed away recently. Did he? Yeah, Happy Rich birthday Cronin. in heaven. What's his name? Rich Cronin. I may be confusing him with the 98 Degrees guy. I'm it pretty sure. he's right, though. I think I think I am right. I was obviously a um, big um, 98 creep degree. in this yeah. in this game. Not, 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 not everybody knows 98 Degrees was fucking trash. Nick Lachey. Both Lachey's. Fucking hope they're not listeners, but... Garbage and singing BSB were really the only. I don't know. Ninety eight degrees had one that I liked. Uh, give me just one night, una noche. Oh yeah, I'll yeah. give you yeah. the time of your life. That was a deeper. That was like a later hit for them. Yeah, it made you want a Spanish girlfriend. Hmm. Oh, this is very funny. So one of the guys from Take Five was a gentleman by the name of Tim Christopher. He details some of the fucked up shit that Lou Perlman would put these kids through. He said Lou Perlman would have sleepovers at his house. He would take kids to strip clubs. He said he would. Uh, that rules. Who's complaining about that? <laughs> they were Chippendales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would take them to strip clubs and then he would have movie night at his house. And he said it would be normal for him to do something like put on Star Wars and then in the middle of the movie, switch it over to porno. Whoa. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. fucked, man. I mean, if. Lou wasn't there. Who hasn't done that? You know, like watch some porn porno with your buddies back in high school. Yeah, but it's it's a game changer when you got a fat forty year old. Of course, Lou. chaperoning, <laughs> fatperoning in the background, <laughs> slapping and moaning. Oh, gross! <laughs> Rub it down. Oh, no. Ew! But get this fucking story, man. <laughs> One of the more disgusting things that I researched in this was that this guy Tim Christopher said. That during a sleepover at Lou Perlman's house, he was in bed with a couple other teen boys. Whoa. What? Wait. How big is this bed? Probably a California king. You know, they're not as wide as they are long, so (laughs) I think a regular king would be more appropriate, to be honest. 
He's in, so this t- kid, Tim Christopher, is in bed with a bunch of other teen boys. And he said at one point, Lou Pearlman appears at the bottom of the bed in a robe, rips his robe off, and swan dives onto the bed naked and starts wrestling all these kids. Creepy as fuck. That's, that's crazy. It is. That's Stone Cold Stunner, Jake. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's something, all right. Uh, does any Has anybody else... Cooperated in any, any of this shit. There's a guy named Steve Mooney who was Lou Perlman's assistant. He says, yeah, he was doing this weird shit constantly. Two of the things that he detailed were rubbing people's shoulders. He would come up and give you a massage. And he would Always t- creepy, pretty much in any circumstance. <sighs> Dude, I'm, I'm going to get back to the rubbing shoulders thing. But one other weird thing he would do is he would walk up to dudes and rub their abs. What is that laugh for, you fucking creep? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. When's the last time you saw somebody with abs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's if, I, with... if I got close to abs, I'd probably be rubbing yeah. them, too. That went out with When in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> but he would rub abs and he would rub shoulders. And uh, that guy that I just mentioned, Rich Cronin, said he would come up to you and say, like, oh, man, your aura is off. And he'd say that uh, he was versed in ancient massage, and he actually minored in it in college. So if you want your aura fixed, he could do it for you. You had your aura fixed lately? Uh, no, I don't need it fixed. Mm-hmm. You sure? What? You, where did you go to school? University of the Southwest Vortex? <laughs> what kind of <laughs> new age crystal shit is this? There's no major... No, it's made up pervert stuff. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Graduated magna cum laude. <laughs> that's, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> 1997 rolls along. Uh, Backstreet Boys got beef with him. They're the first band to break ranks and to come out and sue him. When they go to court, all of the all the shit behind the scenes come comes out into the public eye. And Backstreet is able to find out that Lou Pearlman named himself as one of the members of Backstreet, therefore entitling himself to at least one-sixth of the band's profits. Whoa. He had up until this... That's fine. In, in perpetuity, but as long as they get to separate themselves otherwise, I think that's fair. Well, up until this point, from 92 to 97, dude, they were, they were just making money hand over fist. However, they were only paid about $12,000 a year, each one of them. Wait, what? He kept the rest of the money for himself. Now, he would write it well, off. There probably oh. wasn't much by that point, right? Like no, they, dude, had him. they were still crushing it. 1997, they were cruising. They had a... Uh, Quit Playing Games of My Heart came out in 1997. That's like when they first started to pop off all over the radio, right? I think they were big in, like, 95. Were they really? I think so. Wow. I think NSYNC was more uh, 97 and really exploded around there was a 99 years or Y2K. Advance where uh, Backstreet was already popular. Yeah. Okay, so NSYNC came out and was kind of, like, seemed like biters, even though they, they were... They were dicking around, yeah. Yeah. There's actually a funny scene in that documentary I mentioned, the Boy Band Con, where they're on tour, and I can't remember who, I think it might have been Lance Bass's mom. She's on the tour bus with him, and she's recording, and uh, she's like, they're lying about their fans that they don't have being here, and she's like looking down the street, and she's like, oh, oh, we got a couple girls, and there's like four chicks, and they're like, she's like, see, there's four fans you got, so they're really struggling to find any kind of traction here, but when they hit it, they hit it big. Mm -hmm. When they go to court, Backstreet is able to get out of their contract and they realize they've been being, they were robbed blind. So they're able to break ranks with him. But Lou Perlman just doubles down on InSync at this point. That doesn't last much longer either because they end up taking him to court two years later in 1999. And it was the same kind of deal. They find some loophole in their contract because one of the guys, I think maybe Chris Kirkpatrick's cousin was a lawyer. He looks into it. He's like, all right, there's one potential way out of this. So there's one part of their contract contract which stipulates if they're not signed to an American label by a specific date, they're able to break free out of the contract. It turns out they were signed to a German label. Whoa. So with that said, same deal. Like he named himself a member of InSync and he was keeping all this money to himself. And there's a very sad moment in that documentary where Lance Bass is talking about, they're all gathered there that night to get their first official in sync check. They're all like calculating like, Oh my God, we've been doing this for years. And they're all saying like, what do you think we're going to get? Like, like 5 million, 10 million. They get their checks. They each get $10,000. And this is years of work up until this point. They had everything paid for, yeah. but at the same time, like they just never had any money to themselves. Yeah. 
Damn, that's crazy. But on top of this shit, too, it's not like they had everything paid for because it's, I think it's called recoupable. It's like what record companies do to you where it seems like they're giving you free shit when the whole time... They're taking it out. Of they're taking it yeah. out, and you're, like, you're getting charged for it. Okay, so their food and room and board... They were they paying, were paying for it themselves. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, they were thanking him for everything because they thought he was footing the bill. Oh. And that's where... Uh, this is kind of cool. I didn't know this until recently, but the album, No Strings Attached, was was celebrating their detachment from Lou Pearlman. No shit. That's their bye, second bye, bye. album, isn't it? I bye, was bye, just going to make that joke. That's a real thing. Yep. Wow. Justin Timberlake said something that cracked me up. He says in regards to his relationship with Lou Pearlman, he says, uh, we were financially raped by Svengali. What's Svengali mean? I think like a guru type. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jake likes it. Look at him. <laughs> you little ass Svengali. <laughs> So instincts free now. So he's he's losing everything. Yeah. So these ba- I didn't realize these bands separated from him so early on in their success because No Strings Attached is their second album, I think, yeah. outside of their Christmas album. He got about like five years <laughs> mileage. Well, you guys need me to jump on Spotify? And hear this up? I'll just figure it out real just quick. Just sing it for us. He he probably got like five years mileage out of each band. However, that's not five years of success. Yeah. Right. I think Backstreet had a little more success longevity wise before they made their separation. Whereas In Sync was like a couple of years, but during that time they got fucked over pretty bad. Damn. Now in the early two thousands, all of his business interests start falling apart. He's still viewed at in high regard in the Orlando area. He's given the key to the city and he's named an honorary sheriff, which seems like a fucked up thing to give anybody. Yeah, that's very honorary strange. Honorary sheriff? Yep. Isn't that the whole basis for a Steven Seagal lawman? I don't know that one. I'm pretty sure she's like, Is it really? Yeah, you're an honorary sheriff now. Ooh. Speaking of frog man. Now, in 2003, to to catch up with all these investors who were... Just, I'm sorry, I was right about that, by the way. And sank the... First album came out in 97, and then Home for Christmas was in 98. Oh, I'm glad uh, you cleared that up. Yeah, I'm just, I knew you guys were um, really stressed about it and <laughs> probably couldn't focus on the rest of the episode unless you got that information, so that's Thank why you. I wanted to get it for Thank you, you, John. John. Mm-hmm. Really nice of you. Yes. Anytime. In 2003, the wheels are really falling off now because more and more investors are demanding their money back, and he needs to find a way to pay them, so he starts taking out these incri- these crazy bank loans. I think it was over a hundred million dollars in bank loans that he ends up taking out. Jesus Christ! So it's like Rock approved yes. that. <laughs> well, they think he's got all the shit. He does own a lot of shit, right? And he's got this. I think it's called Church Street Station Studios, which, which is where like the big recording space that they have. He owns like numerous mansions just all over the United States. Uh, two Rolls Royces. Wow. So he's got shit that they could eventually uh, foreclose upon. Mm-hmm. And in, uh, he ends up going on the run because he gets sued by more and more people. And uh, the guy I mentioned earlier, Dr. Joseph Chow, he finally dies. And once he dies, his family's like, fuck this. We're going after this guy. They're not able to get any of their money back. And that kind of like opens the floodgates for all these other people to come forward. But more importantly, for the FBI to become aware of what he's doing because he's committing fraud. Yeah. The FBI's coming after him. And the FBI actually, they're hunting him down. So much so that, like, he ends up going on the run, and they're they're putting out these notices all around the world to be on the lookout for Lou Perlman. There's a dude, fucking that's crazy dude, exciting. I never knew this, dude. He's he's fucking everywhere. Event they think they have an idea where he is because they get word that he's trying to send a wire transfer from New York City to Germany for a quarter million dollars. They sniff it out and they shut it down. So they have an idea where he's at. But they're always a day late and a dollar short in tracking My him down. God, he's like, fat, catch me if you can. <laughs> <laughs> on the run is a loose term, by the way. Maybe on the jog on the or on the, quick, yeah. on the quick walk. <laughs> <laughs> However, the tide turns against him in, in June. I think it's June 14th of 2006. He ends up in Bali, which is an, an Indonesian island. And there's a German tourist there who thinks he sees him eating eating breakfast and he saw the wanted flyer before he left Germany. Mm-hmm. And he just remembered this fat fucking pig. He's this like, is crazy. This German guy takes a picture. He sends it to the FBI. <clears throat> and again, in the documentary, they reference this picture. They show the picture. And it turns out he's eating breakfast directly next to FBI agents that are looking for him. Are you serious? Yeah. You got to be fucking kidding me. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they're right next to him. And they, they have no idea he's right him. there. It wasn't like they were surveilling no, being No, they cool. just knew he was in that area, but they're literally sitting next to him <laughs> they're wearing like at FBI breakfast. gear. 
Did anybody, uh, did he have any kind of disguise whatsoever? No disguise. However, he did check into the hotel under a very faint, very funny, obvious name. What do you think his name was? Ron Mexico. Billy Blimp. Incognito Johnson. No, shut the fuck up. Come on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No. He checks in as Incognito Johnson, and Who's he didn't the catch it for that. Yeah, he's kind of cool. Aside from the child molestation, he's yeah. pretty cool. Except for all that shit, which I, might, I always forget about yeah. when I leave here anyway. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this German, did the German get any kind of reward for doing this? I would imagine so. I don't know Even for sure. Free FBI. brunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got a t-shirt. Like, yeah. <laughs> I caught an FBI. I most want a criminal. All I got was his fucking t-shirt. <laughs> Here's a blimp that was under his <laughs> bed this whole time. Uh, you guys have any use for a Jordash blimp? <laughs> but initially, he's imprisoned in Guam, and then they extradite him to Orlando. And he's brought up on all kinds of fraud charges. How long was he technically on the run? A couple years? I think from like 04 to 06. That's impressive. Wow. For a, an extremely fat pig. Yeah. 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 However. Gives me hope to commit crimes. Stop it, Jake. <laughs> I think the reason why he was able to evade capture is because he probably knew some very high high profile pedophiles who kind of oh. threw some cover for him. I'm curious why he wasn't on a certain little St. James Island or I, dude, along those lines. How did he not cross paths with Epstein? This was prime time for the flight logs and all that shit. Was it uh, the ni- like the 90s? Late 90s or 2000s, yeah. right? Yeah. Isn't that when like all these people Supposedly signed the book and everything. Yeah. On a related note, there's a very strange story um, regarding something that happened in early 2003. Lou Pearlman was like trying, before he went on the run, he was trying to get this band that he had uh, fucking put together called Natural, another boy band. He was tries tr- addicted to forming boy bands, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's a sickness. <laughs> yeah. And it's so weird because, like, you look at pictures of these guys, and they all look like variations of one another. So, like, he definitely likes what he likes. Yeah. And it's clear what he likes. He likes five different kinds of boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> but this band, he puts together this band, Natural, and he tries to partner them with NASA. And... All right, so the official story is that NASA... <laughs> a brand collaboration with NASA? Dude, um, my interpretation is that, like, uh, there were some space pedophiles, okay? So he's trying to, like, start this partnership with NASA, who, who's seemingly on board with this. So they want to... Their, their official stance is they want to get kids more into the space program. This is a couple years before the space program is shut down. So they're trying to get more kids into it, so... I should have been there. He's trying to unload those blimps. Should have been me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this should have been me. I it's would gonna have, be me. Would you get molested to go to the moon? <laughs> no, I don't. Really, I would open up all my holes for whoever wanted them. I don't like space like that, dude. I you would don't? get. I would get molested to go to Six Flags. Hold on, I need to know. Are you, are you touching down on the moon? Are you just orbiting the moon, or are you your feet touching the moon? His the there, palms yeah, of his yeah, hands yeah. and his feet are touching the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, <laughs> if I open up my asshole in space, you know my whole body gets sucked through it, all right? <laughs> That's one small asshole for man. <laughs> one giant asshole. Or, what's his name? Lou Pearlman? <laughs> yeah. That's Buzz All In. <laughs> all right, enough of space perverts. Stay out of my dude. Michael Colon, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but, dude... NASA is exploring a partnership with uh, with Lou Pearlman, specifically his boy ma- his boy band Natural, to get kids more interested in the space program. They actually have a song written. Now, there's no evidence of what the song was. The only evidence they have that a song... I don't know that a song existed, but a song was written, and it was yeah. written by the same guy who wrote Genie in a Bottle. Oh, wow. So it was probably out of this world. <laughs> So there, there was some traction gained on this song. All right, so there is some traction gained on bringing this song into existence. However, it never happens. They say they also explored a partnership with Coolio. Damn. Yeah, just second best after space. He would have messed up the countdown. They would be like five, four, three, two, and then he would be like one, two, three, and then four. Snoop, uh, Snoop Dogg. Damn it. 
Coolio had one where he counted, right? We're going to want that edited out. Yeah, can we please? Yeah. All right. On account of we how. We just lost four Patreons. But I think the basis of this was that some perverts at NASA were trying to slide, slide, slip, and he slided some little boys. Uh, and there it is. International Space Station, where there are famously yeah. no um, consent laws. And Dude. in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to be fucking in in uh, ISS. By the way, you're not supposed to. You can't. No, oh, it's against no. the rules. But no. is that because come like never stops? Yes. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, it gets all up in the keyboard. Next thing you know, <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but get this. So they actually sung the national anthem at the launch of the space shuttle, space shuttle Columbia. Really? Which famously crashed and burned upon reentry, killing everyone on board. No. Oh, we're talking about the band Natural or the Space Shuttle Columbia. <laughs> I'm sorry. Repeat this, John. <laughs> Who crashed and burned? All of them. Yeah, they were off uh, key. What year was that? <laughs> that was 2003. I don't remember that. I don't either, dude. When I yeah. when I found this out, I was like a fucking space shuttle crash. The only one that I remember is the Challenger. Challenger, yeah, which was 1986, I think. Yeah. Why aren't people talking about? It was like a week after I was born, too. I made it. Really? Ooh, oops, did I do that? <laughs> you know that? You know that old yeah. thing? Yeah. Something bad happens the week you're born. Mm-hmm. Ooh, did I cause... Um, no, I wasn't born. Why are you doing those eyes? <laughs> it's not... Uh, you know, I'm going to stop just touching my face yeah. in general. I actually watched the Challenger explosion with my sister, and my mom just turned off the TV without explaining anything. <laughs> <laughs> and she was a teacher? She was a mother. <laughs> So I can see that live. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh man, I, I almost forgot about uh, what happened with our boy Lou Perlman. Yeah, what he happened? get he gets sentenced in 2008 to 25 years in prison. No way. Yeah. They now got his ass, dude. they did. Now the that judge. Is this all money related. This is all. It's all money related. Transcon. Yep. Okay. Yep. Jake's everything else was. Everything else was uh, above board, right? Even though it was shady business practices with these boy bands it was still not technically illegal what he did with them yeah i mean aside from the f- from the fucking fraud and the kids sucking the kids sucking and fucking of course yeah. slipped my mind once again um yeah yeah no you said it john <laughs> you would make an excellent an excellent maitre d on epstein island <laughs> anybody ever tell you that today today's specials are every day of my <laughs> life brother yeah. you should really try the foie gras but he gets sentenced to 25 years in prison. And during this time, like, he's committed to, like, eventually getting out. I think if he had survived, I think 2000. Oh, no, spoiler alert. No. I think it, maybe 2029 would have been the first date where he can get out. He, was, he would first be eligible for, for parole. So it's not too far in the distance from where we are now. Yeah. However, uh, Jake, I don't know if I want to tell you this, but... Uh, in 2010, he has a stroke. Oh, no. He eventually has a problem with one of his uh, heart ventricles. And in August 19th, 2016, he dies of a broken heart. It was six years later. Yeah. From wow. the stroke. Yes. Yeah. Was he, like, um, struggling in those six years, like, to live a normal life? No, I mean, like, he was I getting along. Hope. He was in a white-collar prison, so he said people were generally pretty cool. And there's conversations that he would have with his buddy Alan Gross from back home where they were talking about maybe getting a business up and going. And he has, like, tons of recorded conversations from jail. And that's where he mentions the One Direction thing where, like, if he was able to get out while One One Direction was cooking. It's like Sandusky still calling the plays from jail. Yeah, Dude, he's, like, trying to get the blimp blown back up to get an escape during (laughs) recess or whatever they call it. You think the blimp's got a... You think the blimp's got a really tiny thing to blow... (laughs) And uh, uh, kind of related note, that was his thing. Blowing yeah, stra- straws into buttholes? Yeah. Um, apparently his move was asking these young men who he was hiring for these bands to let him blow them. Oh, blow. Let me blow you. Right, yeah. Um, that Which was seems Michael odd. Jackson, too. It seems like robbing a bank but giving the gun to the teller. <laughs> Do you remember that scene like Basketball Diaries? I feel like that's a pretty common thing. Really? Or uh, oh, yeah, does same with Basketball um, Diaries, yeah. And uh, Joe Buck. What's the Midnight Cowboy? Okay. Yeah. No. Is it gay to let a, a man pay you to suck you? 
That's the age-old question. I know, it is. Let's go talk about it at Luke Turks. <laughs> Next, let's uh, call next, our moms and next <laughs> AMA. Let's make that a big focus of, our, uh, <laughs> of people asking us: Is it? Is it sus? Died of a broken heart. Damn! Happy birthday and having Lou Pearlman. You, yeah, you really had a good monster. run, buddy. Now, now you ruined it with the fraud stuff. Um, you know, I I have a little Lance Bass experience of my what own. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went on the last the Lance Bass yeah. experience. He had the last Bass experience at a rest stop in fucking Delaware. <laughs> you actually asked for it at Arby's. So you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll have a uh, number four in the last Bass experience. All right, he'll meet you in the bathroom in three minutes. Well, what I happened, don't even John? want to tell it now. I want to hear it. I was at an NSYNC concert mm-hmm. in Hershey Park. In what does that year mean, two thousand. Year two thousand, I believe. They're still cooking. Absolutely, Celebrity had just come out. TRL, uh, or it must have been two thousand one. Celebrity was out. Digital, digital, get down, right? I don't. Yeah, you just you me. and me. No, <laughs> hundred thousand miles away, but baby, baby, I can see you and you can see me. Mm. Um. All right. So, and Sync is also at Hershey Park. We get there early. We go to the park, walking around. Justin mobbed security out the wazoo. Just a group of 150 people following Justin Timberlake wherever he goes throughout the park. We're like, all right, that's crazy. We'll never get a picture with Justin, obviously. We go on a roller coaster, and there's uh, we're like the next to get on. Ragu Mangu's with me. Cool. And uh, his brother, Richard Mangu. <laughs> <laughs> and my older sister. And... Uh, we're like in the little corral to be next on the roller coaster. Mm-hmm. And my sister's like, look at this fucking doofus. It, like on the roller coaster now, I'm about to go off. Like this guy's about to lose his hat. And he's got a hat on forwards. And uh, she's like, what a fucking idiot. She's like saying it purposely loud enough. Yeah. You know how you do in public yeah. when you dislike someone's mm-hmm. actions or Damn. behavior. She was and bad you loudly, com- loudly commented on them, hoping that maybe they hear you. Mm-hmm. And then what happens after that? Maybe you get in a little fight. Yeah. Maybe a little security breakup, scuffle. Uh, so eventually, this thing's just starting to take off, starting to move, and the guy takes his hat off, and uh, he comes back. Lance Bass the whole fucking time. Not only does he not have anybody following him, he doesn't even have security. It's just him and his buddy, it looks like. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, I don't so know. completely opposite ends of the spectrum. Did you know it was him? No. We didn't know until he came back. But I mean, was- like, when he came back, did you recognize him or did somebody else? My sister. Okay. Wow. I think it was my sister. Was it really his buddy or was it his... Well, no. Hindsight is twenty twenty, my friend. <laughs> it was his um, gay lover. Hiding leg sight. And we all know... I didn't hear what you said. I do want you to say it again. Uh, hind leg sight. What's it, what's it mean? You're, you're standing behind somebody to look at their hind legs. <laughs> I guess I, no, a no, human's no, hind legs. No, I say I guess if you're fucking dogs. <laughs> I, I guess if you're a dog fucker, that joke works. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> Man, I feel like as soon as Mike's part's over, where he's supposed to do the talking, he just completely turns his brain off. <laughs> Can't say anything. It's, like, it's like the island of Doctor Maru or whatever it's called. Yeah. Ooh, man. It's a great story, man. Was it? Feels like it fell flat, and then you said something so silly that we couldn't <laughs> really get the meat out of what I was trying to go for. Did you enjoy the concert? <laughs> <laughs> I did. We had fucking banger tickets, dude. We were like in the first 20 rows. And you know that stage comes out to the middle. Mm. A little bit of crowd action. Whoa. Did you guys deal with any Swifty traffic this weekend? Holy shit. Mm-mm. Bro, I know I know the concerts were packed, and I know they were lined up outside just to hang out. 20000 just to hang out and buy t-shirts. Nuts. Would you do that? No. I would. For who? Um, I, Shit, I'd do it for Taylor Swift just for the experience. She does have a lot of good songs. I don't mind uh, pretty much the whole 1989 album. That's a great album, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Nice to meet you. Where you been? can show you incredible things. She's a, she's a goddamn 
earworm factory, infectious melodies. I hate her. You make it you hate like her? Oh, BD. yeah. I'm team Kanye on that one. What? <laughs> team Kanye. He's still team Kanye. Yeah. He's team Kanye on Israel, too. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No. He apologized. He apologized. Yeah, you he see had his recent picture? <laughs> he had his fingers crossed behind his back. Yeah, he was wearing, like, Muay Thai pads. He looked so weird. But he, And then his, his wife, he got married? Yeah. Did you guys know he got married? I know. From idea. the picture, yeah. Yeah. Got married to them fucking hard ass nips. Where they at that the nips that hard? For real. Where they at, no, where they at with the nips that hard? Where they at, no. <laughs> you guys got any concert plans for the summer? Yeah, we do. Yeah. You're staying right. We do. Coming up soon, actually. Yeah, the 15th, right? Yeah. Dead and One month away. Oh, cool. Come on down to Shakedown Street. I'll make you a grilled cheese. I'll come for that. You bring, you're making the, the grilled cheeses again? Yeah, I, I think don't. so. I don't know. I'll get one. I kind of don't want to. I kind of just want to... Enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. And not work. <laughs> just take balloons It was and nice acid. to walk around and... Yeah. yeah. But, I don't know. I can't take acid that early. Can you sit in a seat and watch a concert on acid? Yeah. But I would probably be moving around. Yeah. I came close to buying a Grateful Dead shirt yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I went to Ocean City, New Jersey with my wife. Nice. And they got that cool mall. And they have all the rock t-shirts in there. And they had some really cool Grateful Dead shirts. But I feel like a weirdo because I don't know any songs. I know the one song because you mentioned it to me. Shake the Halloween-y street. song. Is it, there's a mall like right on the boardwalk? I've never it, seen it's, this. It's referred to as the surf mall, but it's like not a mall mall. You enter everything from the outside? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like my wife. Jesus Right. So you get any Menko and Menko? I did. Uh, I didn't have a great experience there. Do you guys get slices or whole pie? I get a slice. Okay. I got two slices. They're pretty big. They're decent, yeah. Yeah. Really good pizza, man. I really like their pizza. Yeah. Well, was kind of bummed out. It's, it's my favorite short town, but they closed down the movie theater there. Oh, no. Real bummer. That sucks. What are you going to do on a good... rainy day? I know. Like, I mean, it's a big enough town as to where you would think that if it's the only fucking theater in town, they could keep it open even during the off season. Yeah. But apparently yeah. not, man. I had a uh, a very scary experience there as a 17-year-old man. I got an airbrush t-shirt made that on the front had the Wu-Tang symbol, and on the back it said, Mike written in cursive. And as I walked down the boardwalk, I could hear kids plotting to steal it from me. So I ran into the bathroom, and I changed it. Did you keep it, though? I did, yeah. You just put it in your bag? Mm-hmm. Whoa. But let's just not move the past the point that you left the airbrush store wearing the shirt that you had just purchased i did yeah i like that he made him airbrush it while he was wearing it <laughs> trust me buddy you, you wave it. it's gonna turn out way better <laughs> you just take it off and let us do it and they were gonna steal it from you one kid said that he was gonna take it i don't know how his name is greg <laughs> makes it even weirder I know how they were going to do it. They were going to fucking beat your ass for it. I That's what I thought, so I took it off. Because I was a fat little scared boy. Is Ocean City the town where they're not letting teenagers walk in groups anymore? Or yeah, is that here's Maryland? the deal. I think that was a news creation. Because I saw the videos where there were like hundreds of kids congregated on the beach. And I went down there a couple times last summer. I didn't see any of that. Yeah, but I think you're there during the weekend. I think these problems are Friday and Saturday nights. Okay. Yeah. Where it's like... Tour season, families just trying mm-hmm. to have a good time. And it is nice. And it, it, it is, I like it much better than, say, Wildwood, New Jersey, which is a total fucking cesspool. Ocean City, New Jersey is a very nice family experience. And there's also a very nice place in the neighboring town of Strathmere, which is where I go for my beach beach spots. Like, if I'm not going to the boardwalk, I'll go to Strathmere just because you can spread your shit out. Yeah. There's not many people around. But Ocean City is still a Holding very... Holding the cheeks open in mm-hmm. Strathmere, yeah. Face down, ass up. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, it was. It, it does something to you going to the beach. Mm-hmm. I do feel like a better man today. You do a good job of doing day trips. I should do that more often. It's only an hour and fifteen minutes from yeah. here. And uh, yeah, I am. I'm actually making a, a concerted effort to have more fun because it's, it's very easy for me to just you know sit back here and just get lost in my own head and worry about shit. But. I'm trying to have more fun. I went to a concert by myself last week. Learn how to do makeup? I do. How do I yeah, look, Jake? Yeah, you look great. Look me in the eye and yeah, say that. You look so great, Mike. Thank you. You yeah. look so normal. Thank you. <laughs> I really, I was uh, speaking of having fun, I was kind of wanted to toss that football around. And now I really want to throw that football <laughs> around with you. I'll do it. 
But you can't change anything. I would not even think about it. If the lights are still on at the park, let's do it. Okay, yeah. Oh, man. Jake, you got a whistle? I know you do. <laughs> Motherfucker was born with a whistle in his mouth. Got a collection <laughs> of whistles. I blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Two Short's coming in concert. I might go see him. What? Yeah, oh, he's whoa. coming to uh, Camden. Nice. The, uh, the only thing Whatever the fuck they yeah. call it now. I, yeah. I hate going to Camden mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of different reasons, but it's I would It's a necessary go. evil. <laughs> Yeah, yeah two shorts coming with Snoop. Oh, nice. Ooh. That'd be a good one. Yeah. I got to see them uh, lined up next to each other. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a funny juxtaposition <laughs> because of the size difference. Yeah. Oh, I saw a Giant the other day. It's Abbott and Costello. No. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a Giant the other day. What do you mean by Giant? Uh, a, a 6'11 man. And I'm talking a side of beef. Like this motherfucker was gigantic. What was he in doing? In every dimension. He was at an after hours bar and I was already had a couple in me and I was maybe like, he's maybe where the door is uh-huh. ordering a beer as I'm also trying to get a beer and I completely lose focus of getting the beer and I <laughs> turn to him and I go, how tall are you? <laughs> Did he answer you? <laughs> yeah. He mouthed 6'11 to me and I was like, I thought so. You should have fell off your bar stool. <laughs> I was standing. It is fun when you see somebody big in public. I saw a guy when I was in college. He might have been seven feet. And I just, like, I, again, with an earshot, I just kept going, if I was that fucking tall, I'd just stay in my mom's basement and eat hungry men dinners all day. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up being a friend of a friend, so we got along. There you go. <laughs> Jake, you seen anybody big lately? Uh, just when I look in the mirror. Oh, you devil. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen anybody tall in a while. It is nice to see... A big person just to clean the pipes because, like, when you see an extremely little person, you lose your goddamn mind. Yeah. And you feel terrible about it. But when you see somebody that's big, you feel good about it. I think I saw a, basically just above um, midget classification the other night, too, at that show I was at. Speak on it. She was in a bar stool, and those Tootsies weren't getting anywhere near the ground. <laughs> oh, no. And they were, like, basically just out straight, unbent knees. Oh, no. So funny. Same jeans, same Ooh, outfit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what was she drinking? Um, Capri Suns. <laughs> <laughs> With two hands. <laughs> you guys want to see this giant? I want to see the little... You took a picture of the giant? The I little did, yeah, yeah. I whipped out the camera He's for like, the stop. giant. He's like, stop. I took a picture of him like this. I wonder... Uh, Jesus. That's a good... Let's see him, John. Him oh, next my to a God. Tiny person. Just him standing next to a tiny Oh, person. man, he's pretty and big. this is him crouched over. Look how fucking... Looks like he can, like, skull F the guy next to him. 6'11". How have I not heard of you before, fella? Why aren't you in the league, number one? What do you, what do, you do wrong? He probably just got out of jail. That's probably why mm-hmm. I haven't seen him before. What mm-hmm. do you think he did? That's not even... <laughs> <laughs> We'll put the picture up, then we'll have everybody guess what he did. Okay. Man, one Red Bull and one beer really gets me. I do, though. Acting out. Mm-hmm. Did you say something? I can't hear anything out no, of this here. No, Okay. You be acting hella horny right now. Did you say something? Nope. Do you want to add anything before we go, Jake? No, man, I'm good. You don't have nothing to promote? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just actually, I want to give a shout out to uh, John Crook. Ooh, yeah. These shirts he gave us to us at the On um, Perks uh, book mm-hmm. release show. Thank you, John. Pretty sick. Yeah, you the man, John. I love it. And also a shout out to Sam Harvey for the, the intro music. You the man for that. Yeah, incredible Sam. stuff, man. Yeah, thank yeah, incredible you. Incredible stuff from John Crook and Sam Harvey. You guys yeah. fucking rule. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to send us stuff, uh, P.O. Box <laughs> something between 24 and 39, I think. <laughs> it's in Prospect Park, PA. Oh, my God. I mean, if it's got your name on it, they got to figure it out. It'll get to the right box, right? Mm-hmm. They know. Yeah, they do be calling me to tell me to pick stuff yeah, up. Yeah, uh, we're do trying they? to figure out yeah. where to put this. Because I, I got uh, the little P.O. box, but then there's days where, like, they send you something will come. that won't fit in it. The lady will call, yeah. And they do they like, say, come today and get it? No, whatever. Okay. They're very nice. nice there. I really want to thank them, man, because, yeah, the Prospect Park post office was very cool. When I made my first shipment of books... I brought 1,300 fucking books there yeah, in one day. You, you greased them down, though. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. And then uh, the other post office I go to, which is Ridley, the guy's been super nice. Like, every time I would go in there, 
uh, he asked what I was doing, and I was like, yeah, my goal is to sell 5,000 copies. Every time I would go in there, he'd be like, are you there yet? Are you there yet? Oh, oh that's so nice. It was nice. so nice, and then it was so nice to go in there. I almost didn't go. The day that I knew I had surpassed 5,000, I almost didn't go in because I thought I was going to get emotional. Did you? I did. Well, I tried not to because there's a mailbox outside, and I was just going to dump whatever I had in there, but the the lid wouldn't open all the way. So I was forced to go in, and uh, he made eye contact with me, and I almost like... <laughs> <laughs> I did it But I kept it together <laughs> I did it <laughs> 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 So I did it Two months ago And I <laughs> Deeply miscalculated <laughs> <my numbers. laughs> I did it <laughs> Actually the last four times You asked me I had actually already done it <laughs> yeah, That did actually happen <laughs> What a happy boner, though. It was instead of nice, the other yeah. way around, yeah. where it's like, oh, I actually only sold four copies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he was great, man, and it was—it's just so nice. Any kind of support you get doing anything, yeah, it just fucking feels good because there's so many cocksuckers out there. Yeah. However, you know, I just want to extend an open invite to all my haters. I will provide a complimentary ticket to you to any show I do. So if you ever want to come <laughs> out and see me. You can come out free of charge. I'll even buy your food and drinks, you cocksucker. (laughs) But to the rest of you who are very nice and support me, thank you very much. It means a lot to me. And uh, if I could ever return the favor, just let me know what I could do for you. I think even people who genuinely like you are going to pretend not to just to get that free uh, chicken finger platter at the (laughs) comedy club. Yeah, I got to figure out how to uh, set the terms and conditions. (laughs) You really got to test them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There are uh, exclusions apply. Read the fine print. Yeah, Once how many, how many dicks did my mother suck? <laughs> like a trivia 19? question? <laughs> yeah, in fucking middle school. <laughs> oh my God, wait. <laughs> this guy make, this guy cannot be. Period. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a hater sounds like. But, yeah, thankfully most most nice people in my life. Oh, yeah. Blessed, dude. Mm. You're blessed to be stressed. I, I really am. I shouldn't be stressing at all. Nah, what you should be doing is... Going Something out in public good. looking like that right now. I would. Yeah, let's go throw the old pigs mm-hmm. around. I'll throw it around. Talking about you guys rolling me around. <laughs> <laughs> I think the basketball court lights might still be on. All right. So I would go there and throw that with you. Game on. Yeah, I'll stand here. You go there. I'll throw it because I, my fucking uh, wicked arm that's is so good. Is you do. You used to play football. You know, that's what a Jamaican says when he says when he sees Lance Bass. Wicked arm. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit all of that out, please? <laughs> I loved every second of this. Oh, podcast. man. Man. A little too much diddling for my liking, but we got through it. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I guess I'd always heard this. It kind of was kind of like Michael Jackson rumors. Everybody always said Lou Prum was a creep. But uh, outside of that, this episode was right up my alley. It's my kind of stinker. Yeah, like it's, I want to do more of these types. Um, more just fucking devious cunts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could do without the fucking That's abuse. That's a podcast name Devious right there. cunts, yeah. <laughs> I could do without the abuse, but all the other shit is very stinkery, and it is uh, it is nice to kind of mix it up a little bit. Dude, I never heard of this guy. I never heard of this guy. Ever. What are you talking about? I'm dead serious. In, what? You never said that? I never heard of Lou Perlman until tonight. So I was you avoided quiet. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. That... Hard, Not all bad. those I years. Mean, it was they always played them at the dance, but I didn't go like watch TRL to see them on. If they came on, I would just switch it to the box and see Freak on a Leash play for the fiftieth time. Oh yeah, they were on TRL a lot too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's when I got pretty heavy in the corn around that age. Yeah, I was watching Backstreet Boys and then saying like, oh, "This is doing something to me," and I had to change the channel. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. A, I know it. Strange time. Yeah, and I'm, every time you say what's it, Lou Perlman, I'm thinking of that old college football or was it. College football or basketball guy with the Lou glasses. Holtz? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, Lou Holtz. That's who I'm thinking of. He's the football guy from yeah. Notre Dame. The glasses. Uh, John Wooden. No, it was Lou something. I think it was Lou, Lou Perlman. Holtz. He was a little squirrely looking guy with glasses. Yeah, but a big penis. Big old bitch. No, that's not him. No. Wait, was Lou Perlman was fat, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Lou Holtz was not. Yeah, he was like a a twig, a little skinny guy. Little, yeah. No twinkle toe. 
All right. We've clearly gone a half hour over again. <laughs> we probably should have cut this off. But I just want to thank everybody for buying my book. If you go to onperks.com, you can pick up a copy of my book. Uh, my new goal is to sell 10,000 copies. And you can buy the print copy, the ebook copy, or the audio book copy, which is a real treat. It's over six hours long. Buy the bundle. Get all three. Treat yourself. Thank you, John. Best deal on the internet, dude. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, the bundle fucking rules. Ebook, print copy, and the audio book. Go to onperks.com. That's O N P E R C S.com. And if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for supporting us. It means a lot to us. We're able to do all the fucking dumb shit that we do. Hope you guys like the travel videos that we put out. We're just planning our next travel video, and it's going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be an epic adventure. Our next major travel video. We all have a couple uh, travel light videos in between now and then, I'm sure. Yeah, but our, yeah. our next major one. We might not have families by the time we get back. <laughs> We're going to be gone for so long. But thank you guys for making that possible. If you're not a patron yet, uh, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. It's 4 bucks a month or 40 bucks for the year. You get early access to every episode. You get it a week early. You'll get an extra episode every month. You'll have access to our monthly live AMAs, any book club meeting we do. What else do we do? Got our it. movie watch-alongs. Yeah. We got, we're due for book another club. one. We did a movie watch-along for... Um, yeah, we should do another one soon. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was, I was about to say No Country Old Buffet. But yeah, <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, I would, we'll, we'll have to pick our next movie watch-along soon because I do want to do another one because that was a ton of fun. Yeah. And John, I was I've watched your intro like a thousand times because oh, I, I don't know that I've ever been that impressed by somebody's broadcasting skills. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. That was really was something like, where to the watch. Fuck did this come from? <laughs> it was incredible. Well, it's been in me the whole time. Wow. What a way to end. But yeah, that that's all possible for those of you that support us on Patreon. So if you're not a patron yet, yeah, consider doing that and uh it allows us to do all the fucked up dumb shit that we do. But either way, we appreciate you supporting us. You guys are the fucking best and um and follow me uh, on Instagram and Twitter at Johnny Delco, J O N N Y. Yeah. Thanks, you. Yes. And at Jake Matera. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>